All right, uh, welcome to class today. This is uh, lecture seven on arrays. As you can see, I'm out of town today. Um, so we're gonna do this via video. Um, you have the TAs and my graduate student, uh, Pierre, with you today. So uh, hopefully he's helping out. Um, he's great, he knows a lot about Python, so you should be able to ask him any questions you need. So, um, if you haven't already, why don't you pause this and, and begin class with a prayer. Okay, so today uh, we're going to do, like I said, this is lecture seven, we're going to do arrays, and we're going to start off here uh, in uh, for part one and talk about the basics of arrays. So, in math, um, we often count, encounter uh, vectors and matrices. And sorry for the handwriting here, it's hard to write on this tablet. Okay, so we have, you know, say a velocity vector, okay, and it'll have, say, a vx component, a vy component, and a vz component, or we might have a matrix, um, or as we'll talk about someday in fluids, if you ever have me, uh, the stress tensor, this tensor is a kind of a um, physical matrix, okay, so it has nine components here. X, 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 Y, X, Z, Sigma, uh, Y, X, Y, 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 Z, Sigma, Z, X, Z, Y, and Z, Z. Okay, so the idea that it's a tensor isn't so important there, just, just that there's vectors and matrices that we often encounter. Okay, and in numerical computing, we want to be able to deal with these. So, in numerical computing, okay, we want to deal with these. So, we have what are called arrays, okay? And uh, for some, an array um, is, is just a list of variables. So, if a variable is a box, okay, um, you can think of an array as a bunch of connected boxes. Okay, it's just a list of these variables. Sometimes I like to think, you know, maybe a more physical example is an ice cube tray. Right, so an ice cube tray looks like this. Right. All right, so we've got a bunch of different bins that we could put values in. So each one of these little sections here will hold a value. All right, so now we've been talking about two different uh, uh, computing uh, platforms, right? We've talked about Excel and Python. So in Excel, uh, arrays are really just a group of cells in a worksheet. So it might be something like A1 to A5 uh, or something like this. So Excel we're really not going to focus on today. Um, we're going to focus more on Python since that's where more of the action is. So Python Man, this seems harder to write than I remember last time. Python, okay, uh, has three types of arrays. Oops, I put a H A, but has. Oh man, a major struggle. And look at that. Okay, go back here. Has three types. Okay, so we have a list, we have a tuple, and we have a numpy array. All right, so I'll talk about each of these in turn. Oh, need a new page here. Page, new page after. Okay, so first, the list. All right, so a list um, is uh, made in Python, but
by uh, surrounding a comma separated list of the values with square brackets. So if I say in Python my underscore list, okay, assignment operator, square brackets, and I might put four, seven, five. This is just the example I'm using, okay? So there's square brackets here, and there's comma separated values, all right? And uh, tuple, all right, um, is uh, similar in some ways, okay? We call my tuple, it's a variable, but instead of square brackets, I put parentheses. So now I put four, seven, five. So again, comma separated, but I have parentheses. And I'll talk about what the difference is here in just a second. Okay, I'm just showing us how to define these three things. Okay, the last one is a numpy array. Numpy array. All right, and I'm gonna call this my array. Okay. And oh, I forgot, before we do this, we need to use the, we need to import the numpy module. So we've seen this before, we talked about math. So now we need the numpy module. So we're gonna do import numpy as, and then np. That means we can just write np dot instead of numpy dot everywhere. That makes our life easier. So now I'm gonna do the array my underscore array is assigned to numpy dot array okay and I put parentheses now this is a function in the numpy module array and inside there I put a list four seven five square bracket okay maybe that's not really clear so I'm gonna write it down here again so there's that and then there's a square bracket inside there and then I put my list there, four, seven, five. Okay, so I call this function, okay, and then I have to, when I call a function, I have parentheses, right? And then inside the parentheses, I put the square bracket. So the numpy array is maybe the most complicated, but it's really not uh, that complicated. Okay, so there's three different kinds of uh, uh, lists or arrays or sequence variables, okay, where we're going to be able to define vectors. So what are they good for? Okay, so the list, lists are just good for uh, storing lists, okay. So it turns out in a list you can store all sorts of stuff. You can put a four and then a character A, okay, and then uh, 3.2, okay. So these are all different data types. So that's nice for doing that. Tuples are really good for functions, okay? For passing variables in and out of functions. So for instance, when you do return, and you do return three comma four, you're actually returning a tuple of three comma four, all right? Um, and then numpy arrays, these are really good for math, okay? Uh, which that's what we're doing a lot in this class. So we're gonna be doing a lot of numpy arrays. So you might ask the question, what's the difference between a list and a tuple and a numpy array, uh, uh, sort of pra practically speaking. So the, the real difference is that there are lots of functions defined for numpy arrays, okay? Uh, so we'll be able to call functions on them and use them for lots of functions to do math. Lists, there are not as many functions, so it's not as convenient. Tuples are really kind of a different uh, uh, guy. Uh, tuple, once you create it, you can't change the values inside the tuple. So we'll see here in just two seconds about how to access these uh, uh, lists. And um, if you wanna change a list or an array, you can change it, but a tuple you can't change. It's called an immutable object. So uh, we'll come down here, maybe I'll write that. So. Um, we'll say that just right here. So um, um, numpy arrays um, have useful 
math functions. Okay, um, lists don't. Okay, and then tuples are so-called immutable. Okay, can't be changed. Okay, so that's kind of the summary of the difference between them. And again, we'll spend most of our time up here using the B arrays. All right, so um, how do we access these? Looks like I need a new page again. So scroll back up here. So let's talk about accessing elements. All right, so how do I access the elements? Um, I use square brackets. So if I have my list, okay, and I want to access the second, uh, this actually will access the third element in the list. I'll talk about that in a second, okay. Um, that's going to give me, if I look up here at what was in my list, third element was five. Okay, that will give me five. So why does that give me the third element? Well, arrays start counting with zero. So the list up here was four, seven, five. Four, seven, five. Okay, the index of the list goes 0, 1, 2. So when I put square brackets on here and I call 2, I'm looking at 5. All right. So the index is basically the address of the different spots in the array. So remember if I have my uh, ice cube tray, okay, each one of these has an address. So, you know, it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up, okay. So computer scientists, they like to start counting with zero. So the third element is address two. The second element is address one, and the first element is address zero, okay? So you're just gonna kinda have to get used to counting starting with zero. That's kind of the obnoxious thing. So I can use this, uh, these indices to both assign values inside the list and to get values out. So I can do my list at zero equals uh, uh, eight, okay? And now my list would look like eight, seven, five, okay? Or I can print my underscore list at uh, one, and that would uh, give me seven, okay? And everything I said here for list applies to tuples and arrays. So I can uh, print my array at 2, okay, and that would also print 5, or my tuple, okay, at 2, that would also give 5. So what I can't do, what I said was immutable, is I'm not allowed to change my tuple. So this is what I'm not allowed to do here, is my tuple of two equals 10, okay? This will give an error because it's immutable. And, wow, well, handwriting there is major suffering. I'm trying really hard, guys, to make the handwriting better, but. It's rough today on this pad, okay? I have all these notes in uh, better handwriting uh, on the web. So if you're struggling with this, um, these notes will go up on the web and so will the other ones. Okay, so um, on the practice we're gonna do here in a minute, we'll see how to access this. You'll also see that there's a special um, uh, way to access multiple elements. Um, in an array, and I'll just sort of preview that so as you look at it. So if I wanted to look at my array, and I want to look at elements 0, 1, and 2, okay, um, <clears throat> this will actually give me uh, 0, 1, and 2, is this right? 0, 1, 
I think I want to do here three. Okay, that'll give me three elements, all right? And this uh, is called slicing. And I use the colon here, and that gives me a range of things I care about, zero, one, two. So it's kind of like when I did the range variable last time in a loop, it gives me uh, zero, one, two, and then it doesn't do the last one. So it goes from zero to n minus one. So zero, two, n minus one, all right? And so uh, this slicing, that would allow me to print out, um, what did I say the array was here? Uh, four, seven, five. That'll print out all of them, four, seven, five, if I were to do a print statement around that. Okay, so I can access an individual element or I can use slicing to access a group of elements. And if that was a little confusing or, or a little quick, um, you can go look at the example. All right, so there's one last thing I wanna say before we uh, go do the activity. Um, and that is I don't want you to get functions and arrays confused okay so let me say functions versus arrays okay so you call a function okay um, using this syntax right my function five okay with parentheses so that's how you call a function um, you access an array with square braces. My array at two. Okay, so don't get these confused. So this is an index here. Okay, and then this in here, right, is the argument to the function. Okay. Wow, that handwriting is so bad. It's so hard for me to write on this. I'll just say that's the argument. Okay, so don't get these two confused. Square brackets, uh, parentheses. Okay, uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, pause the video here. I'm just going to write the word activity. Um, go do the example. This is example one, uh, <clears throat> which should be on array basics. So example one, array basics. Pause the video now. All right, so you're back. Um, we have just a few more things to chat about before we'll do example number two. So this is part number two. Uh, loops and array math. All right, so using loops and arrays often goes uh, hand in hand together. Um, so there's a number of examples of this, but as you might imagine, last time we talked about loops where we did these things repetitively, and now we've got arrays, which are variables where we can store a list of things. And so um, we can do lots of, of things with loops and arrays together. So I'm gonna talk about a couple of things. I'm gonna talk about uh, I'll just sort of highlight what I'm going to say. I'm going to talk about filling array or filling arrays with loops. I'm going to talk about uh, 2D arrays, which are matrices, um, and then I'm going to talk about uh, uh, summation formulas. And uh, matrix math. and vector math a little bit. So these are just some examples of things we can do with loops and arrays. All right, so the first one is filling arrays. So let me scroll down a little here. So uh, it's often very useful to use a loop to fill an array. So imagine I've got some array I call velocity, which is numpy dot. I'm gonna start off with this being zeros, okay? So 
uh, there's this function numpy.zeros, okay, and there's a function numpy.empty, okay, and you need to tell before you do a loop, you need to tell it how big the array is going to be. So zeros fills up an, uh, an array here, in this case velocity, with all zeros. Empty makes it empty, it fills it with just junk. Uh, so zeros is kind of safer, but empty is uh, cheaper for the computer to do. So here I'm going to write in a loop for i in range 3 and then I'm going to make velocity of i assigned to i. Okay? So what's going to happen in this loop? So I made an array, filled it with zeros. And then I do a loop for i in range 3 and now what happens in the loop? Remember what happens in a loop? The very first thing it does is it goes in this range. This range is 0, 1, 2, right? So I start off at 0, and I say velocity at 0, and I put 0 in there. Then I go back again, and I say velocity 1, put 1 in there. And then I do it one more time, velocity 2, and I put two in there. So that makes uh, uh, an array. So now the velocity array has uh, 0, 1, and 2. So I just filled this array. Okay? So I can do that with 1D arrays or I can do that with 2D arrays. But to do 2D arrays I'm gonna need more loop. More loops. So new page after. Okay, so in a 2D array, I'll need a nested loop. So in this case, it'll be sigma, like I had up there at the top. I'm going to have numpy. Maybe I'll do this one. I'll do this one as empty. Empty. And I need to give it uh, 3 by 3. Okay, notice empty here, it takes a tuple, or uh as its argument. So it takes a tuple as a 3 by 3. It does that so it can take a single argument, but it can be big as it wants. So there's an example of using a tuple. Okay, so I'm going to have this nested loop for i in range 3. Okay, the i here, that's going to be uh, the rows. Um, and then I'm going to do 4 j in range 3, that's going to be the columns. Alright, and now I need to fill up my matrix. So I'm going to have sigma at i comma j. So notice now when I have two uh, different indices, I put a comma in between them. And I'm going to have that one be i times j. So what's that going to be? We can go through and do at least the first few of these. So if I had sigma, what would that fill it up with? So I go i. So I go first thing, I'm going to go down the rows. okay? And i is 0 and j is 0. So i equals 0, j equals 0. That's the first one right here. All right? And I say sigma at 0, 0 is i times j. Well, those are both 0, so that's 0. So I have, I'm actually going to erase this or write this out a little better. So I have, so I do i, j, and then i times j. So I have 0, 0, 0. Okay? So my matrix off at zero. All right, then I have what happens next. I have J, so I do J again. J's on the inside, so I still have zero on I, and J goes to one, and that's still zero. So I said J was my column, so I'm walking across the columns here. Now I have zero, two, and zero times two is still zero. So that one's still zero. Okay, what happens next? Then I have one. So I did 0, 1, 2. Now I finished with that loop. I go back out and I go up to here. 
And now I go from I0 to I1. And then I come in here and I start this loop again. So now J goes to 0. So I have 1, 0. 1 times 0 is 0. So now I'm on my second row. So that's 0. Now it gets a little better. I have 1. That inner loop goes around again. 1. And that becomes a 1. Aha. Okay. And then I have 1. 2, and that becomes 2. All right, and then I have one more time through, so that's one more time through this inner loop. Now I go back to the outer loop, and it was 0, 1, now this goes to 2, and I have to do a whole other set of inner loops here. So that becomes 2, and then I start off with a 0, and I'm in 0. So I come down here, I said I had 2 on my row, so 1, 0, 1, 2 on my rows, right? 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, that gives me 0 there. And now I have j goes to 1, so I have 2, 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. All right, and then now it goes to 2, 2. 2, 2 is 4. 4, okay, and I did it, and I filled it up. All right, so there's an example of a 2D array that I filled up. Uh, with a nested loop. All right, let's see. What else did I say I was going to do? I said I was going to do uh, filling arrays, 2D arrays. Now I'm going to do summation formulas. Summation formulas. So we just got two more examples, and then you guys can do your example. So summation formulas. Summation formulas. Okay, so loops are really good for doing sums. Um, loops and arrays. So let's say I want to do the sum over i of some v sub i. So how do I do that? Well, <clears throat> that would mean I have some vector called v. So I would have some numpy dot array, okay, with some stuff in here. Uh, and I guess I don't want that in the comment. I want v equal to that. All right, so I have that previously. And what I want to do is add it up. So to do that, I have sum equals 0, and then I write a loop. For i in range of the length of the sum, or excuse me, of v. I'm not explaining very good what I'm doing here. So what I want to do is I want to add up all of the elements of v. Right? So V is some array. I want to go through the array and add up all the elements. So I'm going to use a loop to access each element of that array. So I start off and I make some new variable I call sum, and I set it equal to 0. Um, <clears throat> maybe what I want to do is call that sum, sum underscore V, because I think sum is a keyword in Python. So sum underscore V is 0. All right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through um, all of the length of V. So remember in the example we did uh, offline, uh, you learned this length formula. Okay, so now I'm going to go through and I'm say sum underscore V um, plus equals. So I'm going to increment the sum by the value of V at I. So look here, this sum with an index of I, V sub I, looks just like this v with the square brackets i. So I'm adding every time v sub i into this sum. And that'll give me the sum. So there's the sum formula, summation formula. All right, so let's do one last thing. OK, so a, an example of a bunch of summation formulas is vector and matrix uh, math. So for instance, if I want to do a dot product, v dot w. And I put, when I do vectors, I put lines under them. So maybe in math class you did a vector and you put a arrow on the top. So I learned to put a line underneath for a vector. And when I do a matrix, uh, like sigma was a matrix, I put two lines. So that's what I learned in graduate school. And that just is a habit that stuck. So. If I write that, that's what that means. So remember, when I do a dot product, this might be vx times wx plus vy times wy plus 
vz times wz. So I can rewrite that using my summation formula. Sub i, sum over i of vi, wi. Well, look at that. I can write a loop to do the dot product. So let's do that. I'm going to make a dot product, dot product equals zero. And I can make a loop here for i in range of, say, the length of v. Okay, Just assume v and w were defined earlier. Now I can make dot product is just going to be a sum. Dot product plus equals v sub i times w at i. Okay, or these are the indices. Okay, so I've got summation formulas. I can do things like dot products. And I can go through and do uh, matrix vector multiplication. So that formula, if I have some matrix multiplied by a vector, that is a summation formula where I have uh, A, I, J multiplied by X, J. Or I can do... Uh, matrix matrix multiplication. And that would be A dot B, which is going to be a sum over J of A, I, J, and B, J, K. So I think some of those are in your examples. So uh, why don't you go ahead now and uh, this video will end and you can do your activity, uh, which is uh, arrays and loops and array math, okay? All right, uh, go ahead and work on that with the TAs and Pierre, and I will see you next time.